Hello everyone, it's a US Inflation Day, as you might already know. A very well anticipated indicator, especially after the shock that we had on Friday with a really, really strong and solid US labor market once again. Surprisingly, uh, the NFP has bid expectations. Unemployment was high. It was actually bid expectations as well on Friday. And that's why today's uh, reading is even more crucial than what was supposed to be in other, under other circumstances. So today, uh, we have dedicated uh, the, uh, the session, the webinar session on inflation. So we're going to go through all this inflation and how it affects the markets, the different types of inflation, etc. So as an excuse of today's crucial reading out of the US, which is a key indicator, as you might already know, for central banks, interest rates as well, we're going to explore interest rates and inflation and how and why it creates volatility to the market. So... Uh, also, we're going to go through, actually, let me, let me also share with you the parts of this live session, which is, here we go, so we're going to go through what inflation is, what affects inflation, and how it affects the forex market. So we're going to discover today how to speculate on the movement of the most popular forex uh, pairs, uh, plus what impact they are, impacts their rise and fall. So before we start the session, I would like to, to double check with uh, you guys whether you can hear us and you can see me, hear me loud and clear. You don't have any audio or visual issue. Also, a quick reminder that for any, any question that you might have, not necessarily only about today's session, it might be you're struggling with your strategy, uh, you, you need some help in your trading and you need some, some, some education, um, uh, some some uh, help, okay, uh, regarding your strategy, your trading. So let me know for any issue that you face. We're going to try and help you via our email address, webinars at hfm.com. So feel free to let us know if you need any help. We are here to help anyway. So uh, we are dedicated on uh, help you with anything you need and that's uh, our motto uh, especially the analysis team motto since uh, the beginning of HFM as a company as a forex broker so let me just welcome Zoran welcome Brian welcome guys so uh, in case that you prefer uh, you can join me via YouTube as well. So you, in, in YouTube, you can see the screen and the camera as well. So feel free to join us in YouTube channel as well. So I have some feedback in regards to the audio. That's absolutely great. And I think we are good to go with the very, very first slide. Why is inflation important in Forex? So. Okay, very, very good. Let's hide that as well. Perfect. So, as I said, this session is dedicated on inflation. So, it's for everyone, beginners, intermediate uh, level traders, even advanced traders, as we're going to go through everything regarding to inflation, what it is, how it's affected, from, the, the, from what factors it's affected, what's the consequences of a high inflation or a low inflation, and how it uh, affects the market as well, and more precisely, the Forex market. So, 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 so. Very good. So, 
I would like firstly, as you can see in my slide, to take it step by step. So we, before we move to the actual inflation and what it is, uh, let's go through interest rates. Why is that? Because it's, it might be uh, the, it's the key is the key tool that the central banks are using in order to control inflation. So we'd like firstly to go through what is the interest rate in order for you to understand and comprehend better uh, the inflation as well. So what is the interest rate? So the interest rate, guys, is the overall rent lending rate in a, in a country, right? So which obviously ties into the overall rate worldwide. So think about US, for example. So US interest rate is either, is either the stipulated amount at which commercial banks in the US borrow from each other, okay, or the rate as such at which commercial banks may borrow from the central bank, which is Fed in this case. So What's important about the uh, interest rates? The most important part of interest rates is the fact that it's been used by central banks, as I said earlier, in order to control the economy and to support the economy. So what I mean? The most important interest rate, which is set by the central bank, for US is the Fed, for UK is the Bank of England, for Canada is the Bank of Canada, for Europe is ECB, and so on and so forth. It's for, sorry, affects all other inter interest rates in the, in the economy. Okay? So, central banks, okay, of very influential economies such as US, ECB, the Europe, UK, Australia, and etc. Affect the, the, the affect developing countries' rates too. So whatever the major central banks do, whatever they change in their uh, interest rate outlook, it affects all the other developing countries as well. Why is that? Because interest rates play a central role in spending, in consumption with, with other words, in wages, labor market as well, imports, exports. So you understand that it affects the use of them and how, how central banks use them, okay? Influence the entire economy as they have a tickle down effect, as we call it. So if the rate is hiked, which means increased, that increases cost of borrowing by banks, passing to business and consumers who they pay interest rates on loans, right? Which also constrains spending. We're going to see everything in a bit with illustrations as well, so you will understand how uh, the interest rates affect immediately the businesses, affect the consumers, the consumers and their spending as well. Just very, very briefly. On the flip side, as you can see in our, uh, in our um, slides, right? Which it doesn't change easily. <laughs> On the flip side, if the interest rates reduce, what that means? It means that loans become cheaper to pay back and spending increases. So with other words, people, have more to spend and less to pay for their loan. So that's why that's why I said initially it is a very, very important tool to help control inflation and stimulate economic growth during periods of stagnation. And we're gonna have a, a bit what stagnation is, sorry, what uh, stagnation is and uh, what happens if we are in a, in a in a period of stagnation. So, effects, effects of uh, interest rate changes into the exchange, into the exchange rates, right? Into our currency pairs. 
is that uh, just a reminder at this point uh, that anything you need, I'm here to help. Please stick on our chat, right? At the bottom of uh, our uh, our live, either in YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and etc. Is the comment section. So feel free to question, to add your question, uh, anything you want to share with us, and I will be uh, I will be here to reply as soon as possible. The same stands for the attendees via go to webinar. Guys, anything you need, I'm here to uh, to help. But uh, it is in the handle section. Please uh, feel free. Oh, oh, you're requesting. C can you send an email to the support team, please? To the webinars at hfm.com, and the the team will provide uh, will provide the notes for the scalping NFP session. Okay. Thank you very much. So, let's move on. <clears throat> okay. So, interest rates, as I mentioned earlier, affects the exchange value in the forex market because the rates movements direct impact, uh, directly impact uh, demand of currency. Why is that? Let's, let's take it step by step. So, come on, here we are, here we are. Perfect. So, why there is this correlation between interest rates and the demand for a currency? This is because interest rates are a measure of the return, okay, of on certain investments and savings. So, due to the relative, relative attractiveness of interest rates, investors they may want to move capital into, into or out of a country. So that impacts supply and demand for a, a specific currency. So let me give you an example. If, for example, um, in Europe, the interest rate is, let's say, 1%, okay? But in the US, the interest is 3%. For an investor, okay, it's very attractive to take its money elsewhere away from Europe and more precisely to US. Why? Because if it deposits its money in Europe, it will gain 1% interest rate of its capital. But if it moves, it converts it into the euro into dollars and moves them and deposits them in US, it will get back. 3% interest rates on its deposit. So this is what a, a impacts supply and demand for a specific a currency, the, the carry trade as we call it. Nicole, don't worry, I'm glad you joined us. You haven't missed a lot, okay? You haven't missed a lot, don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, this session uh, is pre-recorded so you can find it in our uh, once we're we, we're done you can find it in our social media our youtube channel and uh, nicole you will receive anyway a recording in your email uh, email as well okay thank you very much so <clears throat> as i said the 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 relative due to the relative attractiveness of the interest rate investors may want to move their uh, capital into or out of a country, and that affects the supply and demand of a specific uh, currency. However, guys, Ibrahim, okay, yes, of course you can. Ibrahim, of course you can, of course you can, if you uh, visit again, once we're done, or whatever you have free time, our YouTube channel, it will be there, okay? Thank you very much. So as I was saying, guys, it's very important to remember that, that the effect of interest rate changes on a forex is never guaranteed. Okay? It, it also doesn't happen in isolation, but rather depends on several factors, uh, such as the perception of an economy's future strength or stability. Rem remember that markets is about 
sentiment. If inflation today comes out and it missed expectations or beat expectations, is not a might, it, it might theoretically, okay, theoretically, if inflation comes higher than expected, right? This supposed to be, let me, let me share also the calendar with you guys. Theoret theoretically, if inflation comes higher than expected, okay, this tends to have negative impact on the, uh, sorry, a positive impact on the US dollar. But this reaction, this theoretical, traditional uh, reaction is, is not guaranteed because as I said earlier, everything depends on the, on the perception from the market participants regarding the, fu the, the future of that specific economy. In this case, it's US today. So share the calendar as well. Yes, don't worry, guys. This is recorded. You will uh, the attendees of uh, via go to webinar will you will receive it, uh, receive it in your inbox, and all the rest, guys, all of you that you are in social media, the video stays in social media, so you can come back anytime that you are free and watch the video. Okay, don't worry about recording. Okay, thank you very much. So here we are. Share the calendar as well. Yes, okay, perfect. So, in every economic calendar, if you click on the explanation of each indicator, you will see also how it is expected to affect particular currency that is related to. So in this case, it's US inflation. So we can see that a high reading is seen as bullish for the US dollar, while a low reading is seen as bearish. But I want you to remember, guys, that uh, that is not a guarantee. This reaction is not a guarantee. Why is that? Because as I said, market most based on the perception perception of the market participants for that particular um, uh, economic indicator. So the reaction will be on the sentiment okay, regarding the US economy's economy future and also how it could impact the Fed decision. So as exchange rates uh, depend on the supply and demand of a particular currency, as I already explained, all factors that impact on either of these, uh, that impact on either of these uh, will affect the value of the currency. So you should have this top of mind at all times when you conduct your analysis on the markets. <clears throat> so for example, you need to have at the back of your of your uh, uh, back of your head also what happened on Friday, right? And how Friday's results and today's result could change or not change uh, the central bank's outlook. Now, you need, you need to consider, so consider this factor during market analysis as we said, uh, we are, we stated over here. So what we mean, you need to consider once the release is out, you need to consider in general, in general, all the factors, indicators, the latest indicators that we have, economic releases that we have from the US and where uh, they are pointing in regards to the future of the US economy. Okay, let's move on. Okay. So, I know that we haven't touched as such what deflation is yet, but one step at a time, I want you first to understand interest rates, how they affect the exchange rates, and then we will move to inflation in order to understand 
uh, the combination of these two concepts. So the combination of inflation with the interest rate and how interest rate and how they affect the exchange, uh, the exchange market. So I have, an, I have a picture over here explaining precisely how the price of a currency can change based on the quantity of currency traded. And so the green line is the supply, right? The red line is the demand that is changing based on the increased demand uh, after interest rate hike. So, so when interest rates are increased, okay, you understand that you can achieve a better rate of return on your savings, right? You have your money in a saving account in the bank. So if the interest rate will mean a greater return for your investment in government bonds and so on and so forth. It's all about the better rate of returns if the interest rate increases. So in theory, money will move from currency in, currencies in economy with less desirable investment um, opportunities to a currency with better prospects. Like the example that I gave uh, with Euro and US, right? So in theory, money move from currency to currency, from currencies in economies to from currencies in economies in general, in, in general with so it will it will it will it will see a cash out or um, a cash out or a move out from less desirable investments to uh, to a, uh, an economy to a, to a currency with better prospects. Something that posit positively impacts its exchange rate, exactly with the example that we gave earlier in regards to the euro and Europe and US. So the flow of money will drive demand, as we said, higher for the preferable currency, while the currency experiencing less demand, uh, that one will depreciate because if a lot, a lot of investors are going away from Europe, for example, because it has 1% interest rates and they move their money to US because it gives 3% interest rate, you understand that uh, that will mean less demand for euro and higher demand for dollar. So in this way, we'll see that, that the demand in Europe will depreciate and, and the uh, demand of, of US, the preferable currency, will move higher. This is what this uh, picture presents. Okay, this, it presents this negative effect, this opposite effect that we can see in the exchange rate. So, <clears throat> so P, P, P and P1 show, okay, the change, the increased demand, okay, the increased demand, uh, in currency appreciation, <clears throat> okay. Here we have the original demand for currency, and uh, which increased, as you can see, after we had an interest rate hike. So, the higher the interest rate, right? The higher the demand for the currency, uh, the preferred currency. <clears throat> so the higher the higher the currency appreciation and you can see that the supply of the currency rises as well okay so then we want to see what, what happens when we have a, we have a decrease in the interest rates what happens to the forex industry, uh, to the demand for forex actually, when interest rate decreases? You with me so far? Yeah. 
Mario, Mario, I cannot help you right now because this is a live session. I cannot help you right now regarding, regarding past uh, webinars. I can see we're asking something about entry exit strategies. Can you, it would be, it would be helpful if you send us an email at webinars at hfm.com. Okay. Requesting for these videos and the team will be more than glad to help you and will provide you the videos, handouts, whatever you need for those uh, sessions. But right now, because I'm live, I cannot really try and dig in to see what happened with those videos, but they, I'm sure they have the videos. Everything is pre is recorded, so nothing can be missed. Please, please, please send an, an email at webinars at ajofm.com or, or our live chat on the website. You know the website? There is a, at the very uh, bottom, there is a live chat. If you text them, they will help you as soon as possible. Okay, thank you very much. So, the vice versa scenario. What happens when the demand for forex, uh, sorry, uh, what happens to the demand when interest rates in, uh, decrease? <clears throat> so, when interest rates decrease, investors can expect a lower rate of return, right, on their savings. You, you, have, you have seen what happened the last few years, right? So, the higher the interest rates, the more re the rate of return. The lower the interest rate, the lower the rate of, the, on, of return on savings, deposit, lending, or, or, or government and corporate bonds, and etc. So, again, theoretically, investors may find, find it better elsewhere, right? So, this means the demand for the currency will fall due to the fact that investment investment capital flows are diverted to a more attractive investment destination. This will depress the country's exchange rate. It will also increase the supply of the domestic currency in, uh, in forex markets and drive the price of the currency down further. A quick reminder over here. I will put my will put on my cable. Why not cable? Remember that every, every this is cable. Okay, can you see? Yes, you can. So this is cable. Remember that in in our currency. What is a currency pair? Currency is currency pair, right? Is one can one currency one currency against another right so here we have pound and us dollar so it reflects the difference between two economies the us economy and the uk economy remember that every currency at the back of every currency pair is the country the economy of that country so over here what we see we see comparison of uk economy and us economy so let's get back to our slideshow. Here we are. This is, again, if we see interest rates decrease, then uh, that leads to, <clears throat> sorry for that, <clears throat> that leads to reducing demand, right? And the quantity of currency traded decreases, and that's why the price of currency, uh, in terms of another currency, detax depreciates as well. So, well, very nice question. Uh, Wilbert is asking, which is better for the economy, high or low interest rates? Neither. Neither high, neither low. Uh, in, uh, the interest rate shouldn't be neither too high, neither too low. We want stability. That's why every single central bank has its own target. So, for example, uh, for example, ECB is at two percent interest rate. Uh, Fed is at two point five percent, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in the near term. So we want. Stability. 
neither high, too high interest rates, as we said earlier. So we're going to see everything in a bit. Actually, we're going to see it in a bit on what is inflation, too high, uh, too high interest rate costs have some both positive but negative uh, consequences as well, but also too low interest rates have uh, both positive and negative interest rates. We're going to see everything in a bit. Now, <clears throat> let's move on to inflation. So I started with interest rates because, as I said, is the tool to support and control the economy. So let's move on to what is inflation. So theoretically, inflation is the rate of, in, of increase in the cost of goods and services in an economy. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So the adjustment to inflation impacts the spending power of consumer, right? Remember that the spending power of a consumer has a spiraling effect on, on business ability to produce goods uh, due to the spike in the cost of raw materials. While on the flip side, when the price of goods and services decreases substantially and the value of the currency strengthens, this effect is referred to as deflation, which I'm going to explain in a bit exactly uh, what it is and how it affects us. <clears throat> so, the central bank, as we mentioned earlier, of each country is responsible for adjusting the level of inflation and uses the consumer price index to measure the rate. So, I think it as a way it as a, a basket actually this is what it is how the inflation is calculated is, is on the basis of we weighted basket uh, of the most commonly bought uh, goods and services in the economy and it, it tracks there is a track of uh, of their prices across time usually in a monthly basis and uh, it gives us the, an indication of the rate of change uh, in, in the cost of goods and services in our economy. Now, how does inflation affect exchange rates, right? So, as we mentioned earlier, uh, it was uh, actually, it was uh, the, exam the, the, the question from uh, Centric. So, yes, uh, actually, Centrica asks which is better for the economy, high or low interest rates. You're gonna, we're gonna come a bit in a bit to that exactly, but let's see what happens when we have a high inflation and when we have a low inflation. Uh, firstly, in order to explain also what is best in regards to the interest rates as well. So when inflation is high, right, what that means? It means that the goods and services became more expensive. Okay? So when inflation is high, this has a, 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 this has a, a negative impact and the country's currency. So the value of the country's currency weakens. This is because, as I said, the goods and services become more expensive and it becomes less attractive for investors to do business. The inverse is also true. When there is a, a significant, significant lowering on inflation, of inflation, sorry, there tends to be more flow of money in a country. So the buying power of the currency becomes more valuable and the exchange rate strengthens. There is no, there are no questions so far in our YouTube channel. Okay, we move on. So let's, let's merge now the concept of inflation and interest rates. So as I repeatedly 
data so far, the central bank uses interest rates in order to control inflation. So the central bank raises interest rates to, to, to slow down economic activity. As people have more money to spend, which is a contributing factor for higher inflation. While on the flip side, low inflation stimulates movement of money, while an increase in interest rates discourages people from spending. As I explained earlier, the higher the interest rate gets, the less, the less um, uh, uh, money the people have for spending because they have uh, uh, more to um, the, the, the goods and services, the groceries, all the expenses, the, the loans have become more expensive and that detects the spending. So this is exactly, in a picture, exactly uh, what, um, what I have just explained in, in a picture. So how does inflation work? How does inflation work? As you can see here, inflation represents, as we said actually, the rate at which the cost of goods and services increase over a period of time. So when demand for goods and services exceeds production capacity, then we can see, right, we have an increase of an increase of the of the of the uh, of the goods uh, of the prices the goods and services and this is when we have the so-called demand pool effect so demand pool inflation occurs when an increase in the supply of money and credit stimulate, uh, stimulates the overall demand for goods and services to increase more rapidly than the economy's uh, production capacity so this increases guys demand and lead to price rises okay so people have very simple words people people have more money it leads to positive consumer uh, sentiment this in return in return sorry leads to higher spending which pulls prices uh, prices uh, higher it creates a demand supply gap we, we uh, as we uh, as we say with higher demand and less flexi flexible supply, which results in a higher price. Now, oops, sorry. Here we are. Now, also, cost push, push effect, sorry. Cost push inflation is a result of, of the increase again in prices but working through the production process inputs. So uh, when additions to the supply of money and credit are channeled into a commodity or other asset markets, uh, cost of all kinds, um, of all kinds, uh, will uh, lead to uh, an, a, a good rise. Okay, so this is especially evident when there is a negative uh, economic shock uh, to the supply of uh, key commodities, such as oil, gas, um, uh, copper, industrial commodities as well, or soft commodities, cotton, etc. So this development led to higher cost for the finished product or service and work their way into rising consumer prices as well. So, for example, um, when the, the money supply is expanded, it creates a speculative boom, let's say, in oil prices. So this means that the cost of energy can rise and contribute to rising consumer prices, which is reflected in Various uh, measures of inflation. I think the last two years uh, we have seen exactly, precisely this cost push inflation. The, the rise of oil and gas led to rising consumer prices, 
uh, and it was something that supported and boosted further inflation. So the last uh, the two years, actually, since after the pandemic, uh, no, actually, yeah, the last two years, because uh, precisely after the pandemic, we had the, the decline of oil. So since last year, we have literally seen this, uh, this uh, cost push uh, effect. Last but not least, what we call built-in inflation, okay, which is the very last uh, category of inflation, uh, is, is inflation that is related to adaptive expectations or the idea that people expect current inflation rates to continue in the future. So all, all lead to higher prices, guys, okay, I don't want to... It's just a different, it's different factors that lead to higher, uh, higher, um, uh, higher uh, prices um, of goods and services. Three different uh, factors that could lead to higher cost of goods and services. So the last one is built-in inflation. As I said, built-in inflation is related to the expectations or the idea that people, market participants, um, everyone is, is, is that idea that, that our people uh, expect um, uh, current inflation rates to continue in the future. So, as the price, as you can see in the literature, as the price of goods and services rises, here we are, up, 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 up. The wages, the salaries, okay, rises as well in order to maintain the living cost. Because if 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 the um, if since the, the, the since the prices of goods and services rises, people may expect a continuous rise in, in the future, right? So workers, everyone actually, all the employees may demand more cost or wages to maintain their standard of living. So their increased wages result in a higher cost of goods and services and this wage price spiral uh, continues as one of the factors uh, it used uh, the other and vice versa. And here I have an old example, but you can clearly see uh, the impact, actually, let's start with the, you see, how inflation is correlated with the average hourly earnings, the wages. So, the lower the inflation, the lower the wages. The higher the inflation, the higher the wages. And so on and so forth. And on the previous slide, I have the personal savings in correlation with the inflation once again. So, as you can see over here, the um, so here is the so okay. So it's, as you can see, it's a diagram of around twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. So. The higher the interest rates, right, the higher the savings. Because as we said, it will mean higher rate of return from, from um, your saving account, from your deposit, from your, uh, if you have investment in, gov investment in government bonds and so on and so forth. But the lower the inflation, the lower the personal consumption because it's not that as attractive as an investment, etc. So now so this is uh, since uh, today is uh, all about US inflation as well. I have uh, invited in today's session also uh, some actually the top five facts on inflation, on US inflation more precisely. So inflation, uh, 
inflation has been low, a low sorry, in the in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. for decades. We have to take um, since the beginning of the U.S. economy. Okay, so uh, but a rebounding of uh, economy of the U.S. economy and a new uh, burst of spending. Uh, has raised some concerns about the prospect of rising prices. So here are five facts on inflation, on US inflation more precisely. So the very first one, the Federal Reserve defines inflation as the increase in the price of goods and services over time. So what that's supposed to mean? So, just a second too. So, sorry guys, where's my slides? Okay, here we are. So, each month, okay, each month, guys, uh, the 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 uh, borrow of labor of, la of labor statistics is this is released the. Uh, consumer price index, the inflation indicator, the one that we're going to see today, which is the most widely used, as I said earlier, a measure for inflation. Okay, so um, this number, okay, this number, the, the result of the inflation uh, reading from the uh, Borough of Labor statistic is taken uh, by the Fed mm -hmm. along with the with the personal consumption expenditure as well. So the, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, uses the inflation and the personal consumption expenditure okay, in order to, uh, to uh, frame its future outlook. Okay, so increase in the prices of goods and services over time is what, what's the definition of, of officially from the Fed regarding inflation and have in mind that the Fed is using these two readings, the personal consumption and the inflation figure, uh, in order to um, uh, decide any changes on the future outlook. Second fact, inflation can be caused by many factors, including too many dollars chasing too few goods. What do we mean by that? Inflation, as we explained earlier, can occur when there is too much aggregate uh, demand in the economy, which is often a consequence of a strong economy and low unemployment. But uh, there is also the belief by many, many analysts and economists that inflation can be caused by an increased government spending as well and interest rates being too, too low for too long, which is something that uh, can uh, spur the, 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 the issuance of too much debt and too much overinvestment. Third fact, the inflation uh, rate of uh, for the, uh, the current inflation uh, rate in the U.S. is 3.2%. The higher that it has been the last few years is 7%, which is 2021, what happened in 2021. So even though, as you can see, the current the latest reading that we have seen was just last month. It, it's low related to the high one. Uh, it's 3.2%, which is like half of what it was in 2021. Uh, even though the, the current inflation is, is relatively low, we can still see some goods, um, such as uh, mainly the, in the energy market or in the commodity market, that have seen their prices rise significantly uh, the last uh, year, the last year, due to the uh, acceleration of the economy. <clears throat> Fourth fact, the interesting fact about inflation: the Federal Reserve used the federal funds rate to modulate 
inflation. So that was uh, that was actually a, a result from from uh, an analysis analy from a, a from a, a, a analysis made by the balance. So the Fed fund rates in the interest rate banks pay for overnight borrowing in the uh, Fed, uh, federal funds market. So the Federal Reserve uses uses it to influence other interest rates, such as credit cards, mortgages, and bank loans. It also affects the value of the US dollar, as we explained earlier, and other households and business uh, assets. Historically, guys, you should know that the Fed has raised uh, the federal funds rate to combat inflation. And a very, very good example for this um, action, let's say, it was uh, back in the March 1980, where uh, the Fed fund rate increases as high as 20%. Last but not least, the Federal Reserve adopted an inflation target of 2.5% to 3% in the near uh, in the near term. That was the latest updated target that the Fed uh, had has actually right now uh, for the near term in the near term uh, in the near term for inflation. So um, actually, after the global crisis, right after uh, the global crisis in two thousand eight, uh, four years after in two thousand twelve. The Fed, like other uh, central banks, adapted an inflation target, and the inflation target it was at two percent for the Fed. And that was uh, that was uh, following the the global uh, financial crisis. Now they have amended slightly that target into three percent, with the near to sorry to two point five percent. So they have uh, updated updated after the pandemic into the two point five percent. Uh, with the 3% to be the very, very uh, near-term uh, target. So why uh, the central banks are setting some targets? Because they believe, uh, and why more precisely they have adopted this 2.5% uh, targets? Because they believe that 2.5% inflation in the long run will help them to meet this mandate most effectively. I mean, the, 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 in order to mandate, I mean, to achieve maximum employment and stable prices. So, <clears throat> so here is just a, a, a graph uh, with uh, the inflation rates in the United States since 2013 up to date. You can see a huge spike after the pandemic, after 2020, so 2021 at 7%, 2022 at 6.5, and is somewhere halfway so far this year. <clears throat> now, Uh, Brian is asking, does inflation increase price on the important country? Yes, it does. Okay, yes, it does. So, <coughs> sorry for that. So, as you um, you might heard over the over the years, or as long as you're. Um, you are like uh, studying financial markets, etc. That we have different types of inflation. Okay, <coughs> sorry for that. Different types of inflation. We have stagflation, hyperinflation, and deflation. Let's take it one by one. Uh, to to see what, what these uh, different types of inflation are and what they mean for the economy of each country and for the global economy as such. So, <clears throat> first of all, 
Questo vuole mettere double chocolate square on the hi uh, Jalal, hi Rifar, uh, welcome. Um, you arrive a bit late, but don't worry about it because the video stays uh, in our social media. I can see that Jalal joined by LinkedIn and Rifar from uh, YouTube, so don't worry about it, it will stay in our account and you can uh, watch it once again from the very beginning in order to understand um, and comprehend better the inflation, uh, interest rates, and how it affects the, uh, the market. So, <coughs> stagflation, hyperinflation, and deflation. The three main types of, uh, of uh, inflation. Okay. Let's take it, let's start with stagflation. Stagflation uh, is, is, is the economic condition where we see economic growth to be very slow or even stagnant sometimes, that's why it's called stagflation, while the prices are rising. So growth in a country, it's, it, it's, it's increasing, but very, very slow or even steady while the goods and services etc are rising so this term the term stagflation uh, is, 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 is it was uh, coined by a british politician back in 1965 okay so when he mentioned that we now have the worst of both worlds not just inflation on the one side or stagnation and or stagnation on the other. We have a sort of stagflation situation. So that that uh, word if you prefer was uh, coined by a British politician. So it's exactly what he said. Is it's, it's the is the worst of both worlds, right? So we have we have slow down. In, a, uh, in an economy's uh, growth, right? That's why I've seen GDP declining over here, right? Unemployment rising. So this is a side effect of stagflation. Econo economic growth declines, coupled with an increase in unemployment, right? Decline of, of demand, accompanied by a rise in prices or and as a consequence inflation right so the, the worst for from both <laughs> words this happened also um, during 1970s as well at an international level uh, when the world oil uh, prices rose dramatically uh, fueling sharp inflation in developed countries. So, this also shows such a condition. It shows also a, a poor implementation of uh, government policies. So, the lack of uh, central banks and government to control the whole situation. And there is a recession, obviously, in most of the economic activities, not only employment and, and in general growth. So, hyperinflation. So, it's the situation when we have a fast rising inflation, so the price increases are too sharp. So, what's the difference between hyperinflation and inflation? Mainly the speed. Hyperinflation often is when there is a large increase in the money supply, which is not supported by growth in the gross domestic product. Uh, so such situation, such as this one, results in an imbalance between supply and demand for the money. So, um, so it results as I said, into a sharp increase in, uh, in prices and uh, so a fast rising inflation. Uh, so that has a, 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 a that's causing a depreciation on the uh, of the currency. 
So what causes in, what causes hyperinflation? Government uh, government uh, rises uh, increase the amount of money to the economy. The money supply increases, so that the purchase the purchasing power decreases. It's excessive money into the economy contributes to rising inflation with too much money in, in circulation, prices sky. Now, last but not least is deflation. And I have a bit of a type over here, sorry for that. So deflation is the opposite of inflation. Deflation uh, refers to the uh, idea, to the situation, to the situation actually, where there is a decline in general price levels. So deflation, as you can see from the diagram over here from the economicshelp.org, or deflation occurs when here we are. Deflation occurs when the inflation rate falls below zero. Okay, uh, or even negative sometimes. So deflation has as a consequence, has as a consequence the uh, increase in real money, in real value of money, and allows uh, allows uh, to buy more goods with the same amount of money over time. So it can also occur. Uh, okay, can occur uh, all owing uh, to reduction in the supply of, of uh, money or credit. So it has also some side effects, which is mainly on the unemployment, so increase of unemployment in the economy. You can see that, um, and uh, because why why this happened? Because uh, the process often leads to a lower level of demand in the economy. That's why it has a consequence in the uh, in the uh, in the labor market. So recession, fiscal austerity, declining confidence, falling money supply, lead are some of the causes that they could lead to deflation and also another scenario is, is the lower oil, oil prices, improved technology appreciation uh, or falling import prices which can lead to lower cost of production can also uh, cause causes of deflation. Thank you Nicole, thank you for joining. What's the correlation between inflation and consumer price index? Consumer price index, it is inflation, okay? Inflation is the weighted, uh, let me get back to the initial slide, because you might have been confused at this. So inflation as such is, is the rate of, of um, is the rate of increase in the cost of goods and services. Okay, so it is the consumer price index. The same thing. Okay, it's, it's, it's a collective part of the consumer price uh, index. Index is a is a collective basket of the most commonly bought goods and services in the economy, uh, whose price is tracked across time. Uh, in a monthly basis, usually in a quarterly basis, and yearly basis, not to give us indication regarding yeah. any rise or fall or overall of the cost of goods and services in an economy. Okay, dear uh, Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Um, as we uh, mentioned. The higher inflation weakens a currency's uh, a currency's currency. Expensive uh, goods detect investors, making it less attractive for businesses. Low inflation boosts 
money flows in, and increases buying power and strengthens the exchange rate. Let me just also show you. So, <clears throat> so let's merge the two concepts, inflation with exchange rates and inflation uh, with interest rates. So here, higher inflation, right? Prompts, prompts higher, uh, prompts interest rates hikes. And this has as a consequence, actually let's take it, let's go straight to the, For example, maybe that. Okay, here we are. So remember that we said that high inflation okay, tends to weaken the country's currency because uh, goods are becoming uh, more expensive and so on and so forth. So, why inflation, though, causes interest rate highs? Remember that, as I said, I mentioned, uh, central banks uh, raise interest rates to slow down economic activity because people have more money uh, to spend, which is attributing factor to higher inflation. And low inflation stimulate, stimulates uh, movement of, of money. Uh, while, an while an increase in interest rates discourage people for spending. So. so, however, uh, I will get back once again to the question that Centric did regarding high or low interest rates. So at that point, here we have the balance of trade. Let's understand the balance of trade because it's key in order to see also how does the forex market um, is affected by changes in the inflation and changes in the interest rates and so on and so forth. So balance of uh, trade, guys, is, is the variance between a country's income due to exports and its expenditure due to imports. So balance of trade can uh, further be broken down, let's say, into balance of trades for goods or for services. So when inflation drives the prices up within an economy, that nation becomes less competitive uh, in the international, the international marketplace. So these results, these results. Uh, in exporters losing ground to cheaper countries. That was also the question of Brian. Does import inflation increase price of the importing country? So, uh, sorry, the higher the inflation, right? Like, the less the compet the less competitive is that country in the international marketplace so the less the ground of exporters to cheaper countries this means that the balance of trade is altered and demand uh, for the currency declines so okay so Again, that comes to the theory with high inflation, lower uh, currency, and that has already been explained by the balance of trade, as I mentioned earlier. So, sorry. That's why during times of high inflation, such as uh, 2021, 2022, and etc., cetera, uh, during the times of high inflation, uh, the foreign goods and services became more attractive to consumers and businesses as they are cheaper. So that one, so that means guys, time imports will increase. 
Consequently, this causes also an increase in the currency supply in the forex uh, market, which results in a depreciation of the currency. Now, how to trade forex market considering uh, a higher inflation or lower inflation, so on and so forth. <clears throat> I think we have covered everything, but now you need to think about how, <coughs> sorry, how this, this depreciation or depreciation of the currency due to uh, uh, high or low inflation is illustrated, it's presented into the forex market. So when you trade forex uh, 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 currency pairs, okay, um, remember that you will need to consider both currencies in an asset or in a, in a, in a pair and uh, consider the economy behind each of those currencies. <clears throat> so remember that we said initially that is a, is a, is, is a comparison between two economies, so euro dollar in, in, in euro dollar is represents the comparison between the European economy and the US economy, and so on and so forth. This is an example from pound dollar and for dollar yen and so on and so forth. So because it's all about supply and demand, as we said, for that specific currency. So it's this uh, fluctuation between supply and demand, supply side, which is the cost push that we uh, saw earlier, and the demand side uh, inflation, which is also known as demand pool that we uh, saw earlier, affected by several uh, factors in the market, such as labor, uh, domestic supply and demand, energy, uh, energy market, um, and so on and so forth. So over here is just a historical decomposition of the core inflation in the US. And you can see how the uh, oil, uh, the supply chain disruption, the gas prices due to you, the Ukraine invention, uh, the, the solid labor market has led to a spike in the inflation. That's just for... for um, Uh, for, for you to be aware of some uh, some of the latest uh, factors, of the most recent factors that um, causes supply shock and led to higher inflation and to the into the international actually uh, market, not sorry, into the US. Uh, supply, bottlenecks, uh, energy, and so on and so forth after the pandemic. Now, over here, we have uh, some examples uh, from the, actually the, the, some of the some major pairs. I uh, have over here dollar yen, dollar cat, euro dollar, uh, okay, euro dollar twice, my <laughs> bad, but two different time frames. The, First, the, the left-hand side one, it was in the middle of August, and the right-hand side one, it was at the end of August. So what that, that that's, actually these screenshots are taken after the release of, after the release of uh, inflation uh, figures out of the US. And you can see how it was, at the time of the release, how the market reacted reacted uh, and how uh, the perception, actually we could see the perception of the inflation reading into the forex market. This is what, why I, I put this uh, chart on. It's also how does the US inflation rate affect minor currency pairs such as Euro, Yen, very, very well. Uh, okay, I will come in a bit, okay? Let me finish the, the major currencies first. 
uh, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna along with because I'm what's the time how long is we have until the figures are out. Uh, we have plenty of time. We have an hour, more than an hour, until the figures out. So um, before I I move uh, precious before I move to the to an overview of what's expected today, how how it could affect the dollar crosses. I will also explain how it could affect um, uh, my minor uh, currency pairs as well. And your example is very good because it's a yen. Uh, currency and remember that yen uh, is considered uh, to be a safe haven as well. So uh, I will come, uh, I will come to that in a bit. Okay. So okay. <clears throat> so guys, here we are. I will bring my. Platform. And the here is just so this is the euro dollar in the one hour chart, and as you can see, ahead of the inflation, uh, ahead just ahead of the inflation reading today, we can see the euro dollar rising. So this is this means we we can dollar right that led to the anticipation of the u.s inflation day but the u.s inflation release led to a depreciation of the uh, of the u.s dollar and if i zoom in further into the third chart, we can see a bit of a narrow range the last uh, two hours mainly but here we are so so on the anticipation of this uh, important announcement today, we have seen since last night a rise and a retest of 108. So that means weaker dollar, a stronger euro against the US dollar. But with 108 handle to be a key barrier uh, of, this, um, of this performance. So what happened over here? What happened over here is, uh, is that the market participants are a bit skeptical, let's say, so ahead of the major announcement next week. Okay, so, so um, sorry, not next week, actually tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow we have the Fed as well. So. Even though U.S. inflation is a crucial release, however, this week we have uh, a, a, a central banks, um, uh, central banks uh, rate statement and uh, rate decision and statement. We have tomorrow Fed. We have uh, on Thursday uh, ECB and Bank of England as well. So there is some. <clears throat> some uh, cautionness ahead of uh, Fed tomorrow, ahead of the major announcement from, uh, from uh, central banks, that it, it, it remains extremely marky, if you prefer. <clears throat> so that's why there is a bit of uh, consolidation the last two hours. But what is expected for today, okay, is let me just bring back the calendar as well. Here we are. Here we are. Just a second. Okay. So what is expected expected today? From, uh, for the U.S. economy, for the U.S. inflation, is to see a, a lower uh, headline, so yearly uh, rating from 3.2% to 3.1%. The inflation, excluding 
food and energy to stay steady at 4%. Okay, and then I'm referring to the headline. Why the monthly reading, so for November, to see a, 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 a slight increase to not a slight growth to 0.1 percent. This is what expected uh, for uh, today's um, inflation. So that presents uh, a bit of a rise after a flat. Uh, reading that we got on October. So much of the weakness seen overall uh, should uh, come from uh, the projected uh, contraction 7% drop actually in gasoline inflation, gasoline prices. So the decline that we have seen in the uh, gasoline price expected to uh, present an overall weakness. However, the, if, if data come in line with these expectations, okay, that will mean, guys, that there is some crop progress being made and it has been sufficiently enough to get uh, potentially the Fed to uh, back off further hikes and move to the sidelines. So what I mean, if indeed we see inflation today slowing down a bit or even coming in line with expectation, this suggests stability in the, in, in, in the uh, US economy. It, it shows it's positive regarding to the, uh, to the, uh, regarding to the, uh, inflation to the US economy to the aggressive uh, actions that the Fed has taken the last few years so the few years so that will be a positive uh, for the for the Fed and for controlling the inflation remember that I, I showed you earlier that it was as high as seven percent that's why a slowdown today will be good, will be what the Fed wants in order to stop increasing interest rates and to call it a day and remain sidelined and keep uh, uh, and actually pause, pause uh, the interest rates, um, uh, the, the, the policy in general. Okay, so however, the key about today's reading is not whether it's not that whether it we will see a mist or a bit of expectation, and etc. Is what is the question is when will officials feel confident enough that inflation is on a sustainable downwards trajectory to declare victory? So this is why today's reading is so important because it will give us an indication regarding the timing of uh, of the of the fed to uh to to say that we have achieved what we wanted we managed to control inflation and we'll keep uh, and we'll keep rates and change for a while before we start cutting interest rate hikes so it's all about the perception, so today is, is, is about the perception regarding inf inflation reading and the perception regarding the future policy, central bank policy for 2024. How, what this number mean for uh, the Fed and what it could change or could not change in the uh, outlook, in the central bank outlook. That's why we have seen, in general, I put the daily chart on, okay, this is the daily chart. On. For the last one, two, three, four, five days in a row, we have a bit of a steadiness, a bit of a sideways movement on the euro dollar. It's because there are mix, um, mix, it's a cautionness and there's a mix, uh, signals regarding 
the banking regarding the uh, the uh, near future of the uh, Fed and the U.S. economy. The near in the near term, okay, we have seen that after the really strong jobs report on Friday, this that which was will led to some aggressive uh, easing which was actually preceded some aggressive as there is easy bets that held down a bit and wounded a bit okay that's why we've seen this sideways movement because actually the market participants don't don't uh, remain cautious ahead of the inflation remain cautious ahead of the fmc uh, tomorrow uh, and they just wait for another clue in order to uh, help them uh, uh, to start speculating the very next step for the Fed. So we have seen, we have left uh, uh, at the side expectations for, uh, for, for the expectations for uh, pushback against rate uh, cuts, but we have also left pending the expectation for further tightening, which is this is a, a clear indication that the market's waiting for another uh, clue in order to confirm that the interest rate hike hikes are over. That's why we could say that for inflation daily, that's a bit of a muted um, response of dollar. So, rose in the, in the sorry, decline in the, the US dollar weakening the near term at key barrier against euro at one weight ahead of the uh, of the uh, reading in an hour so a missed a missed guys and a lower inflation number today theoretically suggests that fed will be over with interest rate cuts and that's why we might see the fed fund futures uh, betting for an increase uh, for a cut of interest rate hikes um, uh, in the very first quarter of the year. So that means depreciation of the US dollar. Okay. On the flip side, if we see a surprise again to the upside, beating expectations, then this could in the near term, in the very, very short uh, term, to appreciate the US dollar ahead of the uh, Fed tomorrow. Okay? Is this clear? So, um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let me check whether there are any questions pend uh, pending. Sorry. If you have, that's uh, so we are nearly at the end uh, of the session. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me check the chat. Okay, there are no questions in the social media as far as I have checked. And the only question uh, pending, uh, it, was, it is from Precious regarding the Euro dollar. So we finish with that one. And uh, this is the daily chart. Okay, guys, this is the daily chart, uh, in which we have seen a clear strengthening of the yen uh, the whole November. While we have seen a rebound, a rebound. This is euro yen. Okay, a reminder. This is uh, the pres precious. Uh, Ask me how does the U.S. inflation rate affect minor currency pairs such as euro yen? Okay, so I will zoom in. Okay, this is the one-hour chart euro yen, which we have seen. Let me just zoom further. I will put even the 13 is chart, okay? In which we have seen initially climbing higher uh, during the Asia session and actually until actually in the European session as well. Flattened at the 157 territory, 
and started and actually we've seen a pullback the last uh, two hours so at the beginning of the other uh, uh, initially we have a, a, a climb at the start of the week and at the start of today's session as well failed to extend uh, further higher and we have some pullback pullback the last two hours so as such uh, my dear friend uh, as such minor minor uh, not 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 non-us um, currency pairs don't have an immediate uh, correlation with the u.s inflation however if the reading today causes uh, any um, any change in the sentiment risk on or risk off uh, situation to the market we will see uh, the uh, my, my minor uh, currency uh, currencies also my, my minor currency pair also been affected because uh, as i said this is um, uh, they might find some support uh, from safe haven demands and etc so for example as the the us inflation looms we can see that the yen rebounds against every other currency in this case is euro so as we move closer and closer to the us inflation release we have seen some support of yen some support of the, of, of the yen uh, against the do against dollar against euro let me just see that as well let me put the yes you can see that so there is a uh, so it's like uh, there is a cash flow away away from actually a cash into cash in, into the yen ahead of the release as i say have it uh we've seen that um is gaining some ground um and that's why we have seen the yen that has been uh, showing some sharp uh, swings um, uh, today, this week in general. Uh, what else? So there is not a significant connection. Actually, there's a major disconnection between uh, between the today's reading and the minor uh, and the non-US uh, pairs. But because you, you brought up the euro yen with the yen uh, um, with the yen being um, a safe haven asset as well, that's why we have seen the yen uh, gain some ground ahead of the US inflation. So yeah, let me. So a strong inflation report today, okay, could temper the uh, the market expectations for rate hikes next next year, while a soft inflation um, uh, will uh, provide support for the market stance and could force the the Fed to re reconsider the hawkish uh, the hawkish position. So in this case, in this case, if if the, the inflation, you have a strong inflation today, okay, that could uh, that that could uh, push dollar again could add. Um, uh, sorry, uh, could uh, uh, could see any bound of dollar again, okay. While on the flip side, a, a soft inflation uh, could could. Uh, put uh, pressure on um, on dollar yen and as a consequence we have, might see the same performance against yen related assets such as uh, yen uh, crosses such as euro yen so that was uh, pretty much it if there are no further questions i'm gonna call it a date it's been too long uh, so yeah, let me get back to the slides. So 
yeah guys i can see that there are no further questions unless if i miss something but uh, yeah we could see some market stability joseph especially especially because as i said uh, we have tomorrow the fed so uh, if today's reading is it gives some mixed signals we might see a bit of consolidation until we get more clarity tomorrow on the, on the press conference okay so uh in regards to the to the market for example in euro dollar one way is a key resistance area uh, resistance area for uh, the asset while on the flip side a return below uh, below 10770 uh, could open the doors to weeks bottom and the 10730 uh, and if that breaks as well we might see the asset returning to uh, the 7 to 9 of November's bottom but as I said because we are just a day ahead of the Fed of the Fed meeting which is also another focal point, we might see the market, cons depending on the results as well, but we might see markets consolidating if they are, if the today's reading is uh, give some mixed signals. So let's wait and see. Remember, Friday we had a pretty solid report. So this is adding to the... To, to, to the ongoing uh, on, ongoing signs of the economy's uh, resilience, okay? And that's further, further uh, caution is ahead of tomorrow's uh, Fed. Fed okay, guys, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much for attending. Um, feedback is more than welcome. Uh, please email, email us at webinsalagent.com. For a feedback but anything you need we are here to help so use the our email address or social media to contact us and we'll try to help you with anything you need um, as soon as possible thank you very much have a great day ahead and uh, see you again tomorrow actually Michal is uh, my uh, my colleague and our uh, and um, agent market analyst will uh, present a session on how to treat the trend, uh, the trend uh, masterclass actually. So it's, it's, it's a webinar focus on how investors can identify trends using basic and advanced techniques. And uh, on Thursday, we're gonna have a live session as well. Uh, so a live session uh, for, um, uh, for interest rates uh, in 2024. So subscribe in our YouTube, channel in order to to uh, get alert on every live session that we are uh, yeah, hosting thank you very much have a great day ahead take care bye bye